this episode of Remote Trigonometry, we'll be looking at some basic physics examples of how vectors work. Here we have an airplane flying in a northeast direction of a heading of 45 degrees. Headings are angles measured from north, so it looks like we're measuring from the y-axis. Because it's 45 degrees, notice the angle from the x-axis is also 45. 45 plus 45 is 90. The terminal point of the plane's velocity vector will then be equal to 200 times cosine of 45 degrees, and that's the 45 degrees measured from the x-axis in this definition, and the y-coordinate will be 200 times sine of 45 degrees. Where we're getting those definitions is from our right triangle definitions of sine and cosine. If you measure the angle from the x-axis, then x is the adjacent side, y is the opposite side, and the hypotenuse is the magnitude of your vector. So using the definition of cosine, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, that then gives us that the x-coordinate will be the hypotenuse times cosine of the angle measured from the x-axis, y will be the hypotenuse times sine of the angle measured from the x-axis. Um, if we type that into our calculator, um, we get approximately 141.42 for both x and y. Remember, 45 degrees is where sine and cosine are both the same because the triangle's legs are both the same. Then our wind in this example is blowing in the exact same direction as the plane. So it's pushing the plane along its path. So the vector that represents the wind will be 40, because that's the speed of the wind, times cosine of 45 degrees. And then the y will be also be 40 times sine of 45 degrees. And 40 times cosine of 45 degrees is approximately 28.28. So, and y is going to be the same. If we then add these two vectors, we're adding the two x components. So the 28.28 gets added to the 141.42, and that gives us 169.7. Um, because the y values are the same, we also get 169.7 approximately for the y coordinate. And that's the wind plus the plane velocities added together. The magnitude of the plane speed now with the wind pushing it will be the hypotenuse created by those two vectors being added and so following Pythagorean theorem the magnitude will be the square root of the x squared plus the y squared and we you get a you know if we rounded these two values so if you actually type this in on your calculator you get 239.99 <laughs> but it should be 240 miles per hour because the wind is exactly pushing the plane down its path so it's like we took the wind vector and stacked it at the end of the plane and pushed the plane a little bit faster and it's an exact same direction but we could have other situations. So, for example, what if you had this situation where the wind, so the same, it's the same plane, but the wind is now blowing directly north. So the vector for the wind is now 0 for x, 40 for y. You can kind of see it's going directly north, and it's still a 40 mile an hour wind, so the coordinates would be 0 for x, 40 for y, and we're going to add that to the plane, and the plane's velocity is the same. We haven't changed its path or its speed, and so if we add the wind to the plane, we will get, in this case, 141.42 for the x component, and 181.42 for the y component. So this is the new resultant vector. So it's blowing the plane a little bit more over in like this direction. The magnitude will be, following Pythagorean theorem, will be the x squared plus the y squared. And we add those and take the square root and in this case, we end up getting approximately 230 miles per hour. And so 
basically the wind is still pushing the plane, but because it's not directly in the same path, some of the speed of the wind gets pushed in a different direction, and so the speed of the plane is not completely increased to 240, it's only increased to 230 miles per hour. You could also have the wind blowing in any kind of direction. Um, what if we had the wind blowing in the northwest direction? So with a heading of 315 degrees. Okay, remember headings are measured from, the, from north. So if I measure 315 degrees from north, then I've measured three quarters of a circle or 270 degrees and then 45 degrees more. So the terminal point of the wind is still following a 45 degree angle and so the components of the wind will be negative 28.28, notice x is negative, and y will be positive 28.28. And then if we add that to the plane, the plane is still the same plane we've been talking about, so we haven't changed its speed or its direction. And so if we add those two together, we end up with 113.14 for the x-coordinate and 169.7 for the y-coordinate. And the wind then is going to be, again, it'll, you know, the wind's kind of pushing the plane a little bit over this way. So I, I don't have the resultant drawn, but if you find the coordinates, th those coordinates, that would be the terminal point of the vector. If you then find the magnitude, so if I take 113.14 squared and I add 169.7 squared, I get approximately 204 miles per hour. So the wind is still pushing the plane a little bit, like it's, it's speeding the plane up a little bit, but not nearly as much as when the wind was in the direct path, or even when the wind was directly north, it was pushing the plane a little bit more. So then what if you had the wind So what if you had the wind blowing at a 270 degree heading? Okay, so notice I'm making a three quarters of a circle, a 270 degree heading. Well then the wind will have components negative 40 for X, zero for Y, and then I add that to the plane, and we're still talking about the same plane, And adding those, the negative 40 plus the 141 gives us 101.42. And then 0 plus 141 keeps it 141.42. Okay, so once again, the plane keeps getting moved a little bit more um, towards the west with that kind of wind. If I then find the magnitude of that wind, I get, uh, or that combination of wind and plane, I get 101.42 squared added to 141.42 squared, and if you add those and take the square root, we end up with a speed of 174 miles per hour. So now the wind's blowing in an opposite enough direction that it's actually slowed the plane down. It's working against the plane. So, you know, picture taking this vector and stacking it at the end of the velocity vector of the plane, and now there's your resultant vector of wind plus plane. Notice that it's a little bit shorter of a vector because the plane's now been slowed down, and it's also been pushed over a little bit to the side. If instead we had the wind blowing in an exact opposite direction to the plane, then technically following our mathematics, 
the winds. So he here we have a heading of 225. So 225 measured from north would point that vector 45 degrees, but in the southwest direction. So the X is negative 28.28. The Y is negative 28.28 for the wind, and the plane is still the same plane. Remember the 28.28 was from the 45 degrees times 40, which we had gotten earlier in a problem, well, you know, part, part A of the problem. Um, okay, so now adding these together, we get 113.14, for both X and Y, because you're subtracting 28.28 from the 141.42. And so, again, you're taking this vector and picture stacking it at the end, you're pushing the plane backwards down its own path. So if we find the magnitude now, you know, following the, the rules, you can still you know, use the Pythagorean theorem, but if you find this, you should get 160 miles per hour. If you don't get exactly that, it's because we rounded the, you know, the values. But you should get 160 miles per hour because the wind blowing in the exact opposite direction will just subtract 40 from the plane's velocity of 200. Remember, the plane was going 200 miles per hour, and 200 minus 40 gives you that resultant of 160 miles per hour. So that's a nice little combination of how vectors work from the basic physics point of view.